as most of you know, this has been a long, uh, uh, heavy lifting, a lot of hard work, and every single one of you in this room played an important part to the success that we're seeing today. We're very excited with what's going to happen here over the next little time, little bit. Uh, as I've said before, I'm willing to work with, with any party that, that has uh, some of the ideas that we have been pushing. Uh, you know, part of being a minority government is negotiation, it's compromise, it's working with all other parties, and that's what we've committed to do without losing the values and the ideals that we've been pushing for for years. We're going to stay true to who we are. Well, that is Chris Austin. He is the leader of the People's Alliance of New Brunswick a provincial party that looks like it holds the balance of power. A, a surprise to those of us in the rest of the country that maybe don't follow provincial politics in New Brunswick closely enough, but as we told you the day after the election, almost a third of New Brunswickers chose non-traditional parties, something that we saw replicated shortly thereafter in Quebec, where 50% of voters chose something new. And what a pleasure to tell you that joining us now via Skype from Fredericton, is Chris Austin, the leader of that party. Well, first of all, congratulations to you, Mr. Austin. Um, you certainly surprised you. those of us outside New Brunswick who hadn't been following you closely. Uh, within New Brunswick, do you think you surprised people too? Uh, I think maybe on a certain level. Um, we knew what we were hearing on the ground, uh, in the coffee shops and the day-to-day, -day, you know, talking to people type of deal. Um, we knew we had support there. Um, you know, not only did we win uh, three seats, uh, but we got uh, uh, almost 13 percent of the vote across the province. And uh, we came in second place in seven ridings. So we're, we're very, um, you know, uh, very excited about what unfolded election night. Well, I took the liberty of reading your platform and I, I could only find one campaign video online. So I think I have a, a basic understanding of your party's platform, but maybe you can say it in your own words. Uh, where would you put yourself on the ideological spectrum? What are the important issues to you? What, what was it that made three ridings vote for you in first place and come in second and seven more? Well, I think um, some of the key issues uh, deal with um, tax reform. Uh, we're tired of our tax dollars going to big corporate handouts while small businesses here at home are struggling every day. Uh, we're tired of politicians and in this uh, status quo system, which just seems to uh, steamroll uh, the wishes of the people on on day to day policies in the province. So, you know, it's 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 we, you know we we talk about everything from you know eliminating corporate handouts. Uh, proper tax reform. Uh, you know, we're, New Brunswick is is in a completely archaic tax system, uh, where you know businesses are struggling, people can't make ends meet. Uh, you look at a city like St. John, which in in just uh, recent history had the highest child poverty rate in the country, yet also has the largest oil refinery in the country. Um, so we're thinking, you know, are they paying the fair share of taxes? And the taxes that they are paying, are they going into the city? Um, or are they going, you know, to the province to be spent frivolously on on some of these ridiculous projects? So, all kinds of ideas. Uh, language fairness. We said, you know, we we respect the rights of both linguistic communities here in New Brunswick, being the only bilingual province in Canada. But, but my goodness, the way it's implemented is just completely, uh, completely out out of uh, out of control. Well, that last one caught my eye when I saw your uh, it mentioned in your campaign video. In in many parts of Canada, that would be deemed off-limits, a taboo subject to criticize, um, you were not afraid to, to challenge uh, official bilingualism, or at least the way it's implemented in New Brunswick. How were you received by the media and by the pundits and by polite company? Were you allowed to have a, a healthy debate about an issue that's regarded as a sacred cow? Uh, I wouldn't quite put it that way, um, but I think when you when you look at the issue at large, uh, you know we've always taken the approach that you know we're not going to you know when it comes to these hot button items or these taboo topics, we refuse to take the politically you know correct sanitized approach to these issues. We've always said we'll hit them head on and we'll have respectful, meaningful debates around them. Uh, we want all people included on those debates. Um, but see, the governments of the past have had secret meetings around the Official Languages Act and uh, you know, making amendments to that act. And, and it was all done behind closed doors without public consultation. 
So, you know, a lot of groups, organizations, even average Joe and the public uh, wasn't included in that. Mm -hmm. So it's really affecting people's lives here in New Brunswick. I mean, you get people that maybe are not bilingual, that can't get government jobs. You got people that have government jobs that can't get seniority, can't get advancement because of language. Um, it's a big issue here in New Brunswick. And paramedics is a great example. Uh, Ezra, we have uh, paramedics sometimes that aren't showing up for 40, 45 minutes after the 911 call comes in. Because again, uh, language requirements for paramedics are so so high that we can't find enough bilingual paramedics to fill them. So a lot of them go unstaffed. That is, it's, it's a real issue. Thing I've heard that you, it's insane. I mean, it's one thing for a, a you know a bureaucrat to have a bilingualism requirement. I mean, you could argue over that, but to have a paramedic to to not allow a paramedic. I mean, I'm I'm guessing whether you speak French or speak English, if you have God forbid a heart attack or an injury. You don't care if they speak English, French, or, or Japanese. Exactly. You know? Exactly. That is, I have never oh. heard that before, and I can imagine how that would resonate if you, if, if that, and that's just incredible. Thank you for that uh, news I didn't know. Can I ask you about something else that's of interest to me? I'm, I'm originally from Alberta, and, and, I, and I think about the oil sands and the oil patch. And you mentioned the largest refinery in Canada is right there in St. John. I think that's most Canadians don't know that. They assume mm -hmm. the big refineries are, are in Alberta. Um, the Energy East pipeline, which mm -hmm. when it was uh, terminated, was had a budget of $15.7 billion just to construct the thing. And I don't know exactly right. how much of that would have been in New Brunswick, but I, surely the, the number would be billions. I know mm -hmm. that the, the New Brunswick legislature at one point, uh, all three parties of the day voted in support of it, but it sort of, it seemed to me like it didn't have a lot of energetic boosters, certainly not in, in, the, in the past premier. What, what's your party's view on Energy East, on developing oil and gas, on fracking, which I understand mm -hmm. was prospective, but then the Rexton riots sort of put that out. Do you have anything to say on energy? Was that, was that an issue in the campaign? Well, <laughs> excuse me, it, it wasn't quite as big an issue this campaign as it was the last one. But uh, the reality is New Brunswick is 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 poor and practically broke. Um, and the reason is, is because we, we've for so long lived in this extreme socialist mentality where everything should be free to everybody and let's put taxes through the roof to try to pay for it and let's borrow whatever else we need uh, to make sure that we keep this uh, you know kind of fiat system going. Um, so in terms of energy specifically, what I've always said is our, our families, our young people here in New Brunswick, they're boarding planes every week. They're traveling out west uh, for 30 days at a time, some of them, uh, working the very things that we refuse to do here. And all the while, we're receiving transfer payments from out west here to New Brunswick, which you know help our health care and education system. So we have to be willing, at least open, to to resource development. I mean, that's, that's just if we're going to ever going to get to where we need to be. And with that said, uh, it has to be done right, and you can't shove these things down people's throats. Uh, fracking was a very contentious issue in 2014, and what we took the position was, look, if there's certain areas which just simply geographically the people there do not want to have fracking, we would allow certain areas to, you know, to either hold a referendum to to uh, bow out if they if they so choose, um, and making sure and, and technology is always advancing. Slick water was always the big issue. Um, you know, with the well casings and the slick water, well, technology is changing, hearing about propane gel uh, fracking. So there, there's all kinds of different uh, advancements in technology, I think, which could open the doors mm -hmm. to. Well, I'm glad you're open to it. I, as an Alberta boy, I mean, I've grown up around oil and gas, and so I'm not scared of it. And, and I've, I've seen places like Pennsylvania that were a rust belt, that were in economic decline, decline be revived. And, mm -hmm. and it is my hope as a Canadian that that economic revival will come to our friends in New Brunswick and elsewhere. Let me talk more about the practical politics because it was interesting on election night, it was a real squeaker. In fact, there's no majority there. Uh, catch us up because when we last covered uh, your results, we, we suggested that you were in a place to be the, the kingmaker, the power broker. How was that resolved? Has the lieutenant governor decided, um, or has the province come to a, a resolution on who's gonna, who's gonna be in the government? No, that's the crazy thing. Uh, we was just meeting with our, our volunteers today to go over staffing, um, you know, funding and that sort of thing. Excuse me for staffing, but we can't even get that because the government right now is just completely up in the air, which is ridiculous. 
uh, the current liberal premier, Mr. Gallant, should do the honorable thing and resign and get out of the way so we can move on with governing this province. But he refuses to. He's he's using delay tactics uh, to try to get the majority. He's called probably every MLA in the in the legislature that you could imagine uh, to try to get them to cross the floor. So uh, desperation, uh, no question. But again, this is this is holding everything just in limbo. Um, both in government as a whole and even as us as a party to have the budget we need to hire staff to be able to move forward. So it's, it's, uh, but, but, but with it said, once he's out of the way and he will be out of the way, uh, then I think we can, we can develop a stable government, um, you know, to be able to get some bills forward and, and turn New Brunswick around. So just to clarify, and we talked about this on the show the other day, but we're, we've got you right here talking to us live, so you're the source of it. Um, have you come to terms with the Conservative Party on, on a modus vivendi, on a, on a way forward, what you would support them on, what you wouldn't? Have you, have you, I remember federally when there was a minority government and the three opposition parties of the day, the Liberals, the NDP, and the Bloc, they actually signed a contract that they present, they wanted to present to the governor general to form a coalition. Like it was very formal, a very formal written deal. Do you have a term sheet or a contract with the conservative, progressive conservative party on how to form a governing coalition with them? Have you got that uh, tangible yet? No, and I did meet with the lieutenant governor to reassure her that once the liberals are out of the way, that I am willing to work. Uh, cooperatively in an informal, uh, non-binding way with the uh, Conservative government to get that majority. And, and, and it would be a very tight majority, mm -hmm. uh, but I'd be willing to do that on a case-by-case, bill-by-bill basis. Um, what, I'm, what I don't want to do, Ezra, to be honest, is I don't want to be in anybody's back pocket here. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important that you know minority governments are about negotiation, they're about give and take, but I'm, I'm very hesitant to get into any type of coalition or any formal agreements with the Conservatives. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem with the Conservative Party here in New Brunswick is, is they've, they've kind of become a, a, a liberal light party. Um, you know, they, they, they've, they've lost their way, I think, over the years where you can't tell the difference between the Liberal and Conservative parties anymore. But there are some things that they have pushed for that we certainly agree with. And, uh, you know, I'm willing to work with them as much as possible to create stability and, and to get things done here at home. Hmm. You know, you sound a little bit to me, and I'm not putting you in his camp or anything, but just you've made me think of Maxime Bernier uh, twice, because first of all, the name of your party, the People's Alliance, and, and his is the People's Party, and your criticisms of the conservatives from which you've come, they, they're a liberal light, that sounds like something Maxime Bernier would say about the Andrew Scheer conservatives. Um, ha have you had any interactions with, with Bernier or his team? Is there any thing you look at him as a role model or vice versa? I'm just curious if there's any connection because uh, it does strike me as, as similar and critics would say you split the vote from the conservative but but maybe supporters would say well you're you're there to you know make sure they are truly conservative. I don't know I just find it an interesting phenomenon. Do you have any th thoughts on that? Well um I guess I would say this. We've been here for eight years. Right. We started the party in 2010. So Maxine Bernier came onto the scene just I think yeah. it was in the last year or two. Ago, so, yeah. Right. So, um, no, there's no connection whatsoever there with Mr. Bernier. I did have a chance to meet him when he was running in the leadership. Um, you know, I, I met him, you know, had a, a quick conversation with him. But beyond that, there's, there's no connection whatsoever uh, with Mr. Bernier. I do understand his sentiment with the two-party system. I've been saying that provincially. Um, and I know the Conservatives uh, and the Liberals, frankly, in this last campaign, used the vote splitting myth uh, quite heavily. Um, and apparently the people of New Brunswick didn't buy into it, thankfully. Mm -hmm. uh, they voted for what they believed in. And uh, that's what we need, I believe, in our, in our system. We've got to stop this idea of, you know, these parties seem to think they own people's votes or they're entitled to people's votes. And, and that's just arrogance and, and, and foolishness, frankly. Um, I own my own vote and I'll vote for what I believe in. If everybody did that, I think we'd have a better, a better system. You've been very generous with your time with us today and I'm just delighted to meet you in person. We've been, we've been talking about you, your ears are burning. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's glad to hear it straight from you. Um, it strikes me that you are independent minded and, and you've said a few things today that I wouldn't say they surprised me, but they certainly caught my ear. Uh, when you questioned the, the giant refinery, well, that's taking on quite a quite a powerful interest, the Irving refinery. And and when you challenge 
the traditional application of bilingualism, especially that crazy paramedic. I mean, you, example, you're taking on a sacred cow, and the fact that you're not willing to sign a, a perpetual contract or a, a binding contract with the conservatives, you're, you're sounding very independent to me, which I like, because you're, it sounds like you're a tiny bit of a rebel, if I can use that word. Um, mm -hmm. I want to know how you've been treated by the political establishment, including the media, the media, because I think sometimes the media is a very uh, closed group. It's a clique. And if you get offside with them, they'll marginalize you. They'll call you extremist. I mean, you use the phrase socialist mentality. Have you been called far right? Or have you been marginalized by polite company? Or do people just know you well enough? And is New Brunswick a small enough place that that, that kind of name calling just wouldn't work on you? Well, I, I think it's been attempted, but I think you, you're right. I think you just hit it on the head. New Brunswick is a small town mentality, right? Um, you know, the people that know me and know and, and read our platform, the things that we stand for, they see that we're not this far right radical group. What we are is we're a group of common sense, rational people that are saying the system is out of whack and you can't just prune the edges. You, you, need, you need to you need to roll up your sleeves and do some serious uh, uh, gardening, if, if, you, if you will, you know, to, to get things right. And in terms of the, the Irving Oil Refinery, I mean, look, we think it's great that it's here. It employs a lot of people and, and, and we support the refinery. All we're asking is that that refinery will pay a, a reasonable and fair share of taxes into the province uh, because, again, that, that refinery does not include machinery and equipment in their assessments. Mm -hmm. So they have a very, very low amount of taxes that they would pay comparable to places like Alberta mm -hmm. where they'd be paying $20 million more in taxes every year. So, again, we want industry, uh, but we want industry paying fair and reasonable taxes because when they don't, uh, people do. They, you know, they, then again, when you get these liberal governments that come in with all these free programs and free to everything, mm -hmm. to everybody, taxes have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. So they, they put people's taxes through the roof. Um, I don't know if you, Ezra, if you heard about the property tax scandal that happened in New Brunswick, but another case where people, the government literally uh, fabricated renovations to homes to try to increase more tax revenue, and mm -hmm. it blew up here in this province. It was insane. Wow. I am not familiar with that, but you've certainly, again, told me something quite surprising. I'm very glad to have spent uh, these past 20 minutes with you. I'm grateful for your time. It sounds like you're in uh, a, a curious uh, holding pattern until the lieutenant governor makes a ruling. I wish you good luck. I'm impressed with what I've heard, and I'm, I'm sure that our viewers from around the country uh, are now going to be following much more closely your efforts, and, I, and I'm sure they would join with me in wishing you good luck and, and to say that I personally uh, find what you're saying quite exciting, and I hope it catches on, and, and hopefully we can talk to you again in the future um, after the government is resolved and when you're actually getting into the hard work of governing. Yes. No, I appreciate that, Ezra, and any time, uh, I'd love to come back. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, and good luck. Great. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. There you have it. That's Chris Austin. He's the leader of the People's Alliance of New Brunswick. As he mentioned, the party has been around since 2010, but now they have three uh, elected legislators, second in seven more ridings, and they seem to hold the balance of power. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show, weekdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Every day I do a monologue, interview a guest, and read my fan mail and my hate mail. To subscribe, Go to therebel.media slash shows.